Hello my dear students in this lecture i will discuss about bishop's score in detail and before moving towards the topic guys i just first want to say that if you will find my video useful then please like to my video and also give your valuable comments plus if you are new at my channel then please subscribe to my channel for getting updates now moving back towards the topic that is bishop's score it is called bishop's score because it was developed by dr edward bishop in the 1960s next are the uses of bishop's score that why we are using the bishop's score so the bishop's score is a system which is used by medical professionals to decide first one is how likely it is that patient will go into labor soon means the bishop score help to decide that whether the patient will go into spontaneous labor soon or not next is to determine whether they should recommend induction means bishop score help to decide that whether there is a need of induction of labor or not and third one is how likely it is that an induction will result in vaginal birth means the bishop score helps to decide that whether the induction of labor will be successful or not that whether the induction of labor will result in vaginal birth or not this is the bishop score it has five parameters or we can say the components which has to be assessed first one is cervical dilatation next is cervical length or effacement next is cervical consistency next is cervical position and last one is the station of the head of the fetus i will discuss all these parameters one by one first one is cervical dilatation that how much cervix is dilated or opened so when it is 10 cm it means the cervix is fully dilated so when the cervix is closed then give score 0 and when the cervix is 1 to 2 cm dilated then give score 1 and if the cervix is 3 to 4 cm dilated then give score 2 and if the cervix is 5 cm or more than 5 cm dilated then give score 3 the next parameter is cervical length or the effacement of the cervix effacement or the length of the cervix what is effacement it is pulling up of the cervix or taking up of the cervix as you can see in the diagrams the cervix is pulled upwards and the muscle fibers of the cervix is mixed or merges with the muscle fibers of the lower uterine segment as you can see here here the cervix is fully effaced here the muscle fibers of the cervix is merged or mixes with the lower uterine segment the effacement or the cervical length is measured in centimeters so this means how thin your cervix is it is normally about 3 cm long here you can see this is a normal length of the cervix which is 3 cm and it gradually means it slowly becomes thinner as the labor progress so with the progression of the labor the cervix slowly become thinner the cervix slowly pulled upward and here you can see this is the full length of the cervix that is 3 cm and here the cervix become thin that is 2 cm and here the cervix is only 1 cm and in this diagram the cervix is fully effaced in the primary gravita the cervix first effaced and then dilated like this here the cervix is effaced and then dilatation occurs but in the case of multi para the dilatation and the effacement both occur simultaneously simultaneously means at the same time so when the length of cervix is 3 cm then give score 0 when the length of the cervix is 2 cm then give score 1 and when the length of the cervix is 1 cm then give score 2 and when the cervix is fully effaced then give score 3 the total score in the case of cervical dilatation and in the case of length of the cervix is 3 the next parameter is consistency 
that is the feel of the cervix and when the cervix is firm means when the cervix is hard then give score zero when the consistency or when the feel of the cervix is medium means neither it is firm nor it is soft then give score one and when the cervix is fully ripened or when the cervix is soft then give score two as the ripened cervix leads to the dilatation of cervix and its total score is two the next parameter is cervical position or the position of the cervix in the case of position of the cervix you can see these diagrams as in the diagram a throughout the pregnancy the cervix lies behind the head of the fetus and this position of the cervix is known as posterior cervix while near the beginning or at the early labor this cervix start moving forward as you can see here in the diagram b the cervix comes in the middle while in the case of diagram c as the labor progress the cervix comes forward in front of the head of the fetus and that position of the cervix is known as anterior cervix so when the position of the cervix is posterior then give score zero and when the cervix is present in the middle then give score one and when the position of the cervix is anterior then give score two and its total score is two next is the last parameter of bishop's score that is the station of the head of the fetus the station of the fetal head is usually noted to assess that in the birth canal where the baby's head is so before the labor begins the head of the fetus is lies at minus 5 so when the labor begins and with the progress of labor when the fetal head is present at the level of ischial spines of the pelvis then it is considered as zero station and with the further progress of the labor when the head is clearly visible and the baby is about to be delivered then the station of the head is considered as plus 5 so in between the minus 5 and the plus 5 station the readings is the readings are like that minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 and minus 1 and then from 0 it's plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and plus 4 So when the station of the head of the fetus is minus three, then give score zero, and when the station is minus two, then give score one. And with the further descent, when the station of the head is minus one or zero, then give score two. And with the further descent of the head of the fetus, when the station of the head is plus two, then give score three. and its total score is 3 so the total score in the bishop's score is 13 while the favorable score is from 6 to 13 while the unfavorable is from 0 to 5 so how the bishop's score will help to detect that whether the patient will go into spontaneous labor soon or not or whether the induction of labor will be successful or not so here we are If the score is eight or above, then the spontaneous labor would start soon. Plus, if the induction of labor should be done, it will be successful. But if the bishop score is between six and seven, then it is not expected that labor will be starting soon. Plus, if the induction of labor should be done. it may or may not be successful so there is 50 50 chances at last if the bishop score is 5 or below which is an unfavorable in that case even less expected to start spontaneously soon so labor is very less expected to start 
by its own any time soon and if the induction of labor should be done it will not be successful that's all about bishop score i hope you all are clear with this topic but still my dear students if you have any kind of query then please ask me in the comment section i will definitely answer your queries